All right, so with Lorelai and Bruno down, only Agatha and Lance remain. Now again, with Agatha, you really gotta just... It's sort of a toss-up between how good you play, which is, of course, the part you can take care of, and if the RNG feels like being nice to you. And then again, you can uh, solve this issue if you just, again, uh, go for try and go for those one-shots. Now, I'm just checking to see... Um, what my Pokemon power is on Mega Drain and Psychic for Kida, we're, we're very much in the clear because I use those PP ups on her uh, Psychic and, um, you know, just the Psychic, which is fine. Now, Agatha's gonna tell us that she actually knew, um, Oak in his youth. He went on to be a researcher, she went on to be a trainer, eventually became an Elite Four member. Now, again, with the RNG, she's gonna love, love, love sleep moves and confusion moves. <laughs> Obviously, Confuse Ray. Although I believe her Golbat actually carries Supersonic and Confuse Ray, which is weird beyond me. I don't know. Why would you do that? The Confuse Ray is obviously the more dependent of the two. It actually has accuracy that more so than Supersonic. So, first things first here. Yeah, that lick. Wow. I don't know what happened. Oh, of course, the critical happened, but I did not think even with the critical it would do that much damage. <laughs> Oh, I'd, let me tell you, if Kita was a Gengar, this this wouldn't be much of an issue at all, but uh, unfortunately. So yeah, Gengar, Poison Ghost, Psychic it, and it's down in two hits. Alright, this Golbat here. Now, Kita is taking some damage, but I go ahead and let her continue through anyway. Now, just go straight for the Psychic, because it's uh, Poison Flying. The only thing to worry about, again, is that the first thing this thing is always going to try and do is confuse you. The only question is how. Um, and of course it goes for the Super Sonic, which is just fine with me. Again, it has such low accuracy, that's probably why it missed. <laughs> this is fine with me. Now, I'm debating whether or not, because I want to hold on to as much, um, psychic Pokemon powers as I can. Now, she, Agatha uh, demonstrates there, she's the only trainer who will actually take the time to withdraw her Pokemon sometimes. Although, almost always, when she withdraws the Pokemon, it's kind of in your favor. And I wish I could show you guys this, but when I go ahead and train the team up for the bonus videos, she does this a bunch of times. Now, I actually put her Haunter to sleep, but she switches out. So I'm just like, you know what, this Golbat is on its last leg, I'm just gonna Psychic it and just stick with that. I am trying to make the fights a little bit more entertaining, but ultimately, when it comes down to it, you know, this is what we worked for, let's just go ahead and beat him. It kind of gets that way after a while. So since this thing's already asleep, I'm not even going to bother with wasting any more PP on my Psychic. Just go ahead and use Dream Eater. It's effectively the same thing. Dream Eater being a Psychic type, it'll do really well against the Poison type Haunter. Or sorry, Poison Subtype. Eh, it's not too much of a big deal. Now, I'm actually kind of shocked that most of the Elite Four members that when they have their Pokemon in the red, they actually didn't decide to Hyper Potion or Full Restore in some cases. Mm. Alright, this Arbok, it's only a problem because it has Glare. Glare will paralyze your Pokemon. Although Arbok really isn't a good Pokemon with good stats all around, so it's not going to be much of a problem. I sent Eric out here because I want him to get some uh, experience under his belt. Just go ahead with the Mega Kick. Which, oh, I, wow, I guess I totally, that totally went over my head. That's why I replaced with the Bubble before I went into... Um, I probably skipped that when I took out the part where I taught submission. I also switched out Bubble for some kind of yeah, half decent move. But don't worry, before Lance, we actually get his uh, fourth and final move for his move set. This Gengar is our highest level Pokemon. Um, it has Psychic, Hypnosis, Dream Eater, and Lick, I believe. So it's almost identical to Kita's move pool, except it doesn't have the Mega Drain. You know what? No, I take it back. It does not have. Um, Lick. It has the exact same moveset, I believe, as Kita does. If not, I'll go ahead and I'll put up an annotation correcting me on what its moveset is. This comes really close, and I get that special fall. And I'm debating what I want to do here. I'm thinking that thing's faster than me, so I gotta switch out. I'm pretty sure it is, you know. It's it's the next evolution up. It's at a higher level than me. It's nine times unless I got a speed drop on it, which I didn't. I got a special drop. It's it's gonna be faster than me. So yeah, ultimately I make the wise move and go ahead and just heal off. <laughs> And, I don't know, yes, Agatha's, this Gengar will do that sometimes, more so than her Haunter, who also has the Hypnosis Dream Eater combo. It'll just go ahead and straight up use Dream Eater, which, of course, is fine for us, because it's not going to do anything. So, that went over well. And we got a level. Went up even better. Ooh, you're something special, child. Oh, yes. Supposed to be glad she didn't pinch our cheeks. <laughs> that would be terrible. 
Okay, I got this down. This is a little over dramatic if you ask me. What's the necessity of having this huge column which you're on a rail for? You literally you're our uh, our player character, Red here, just walks on his own automatically. I don't know. Anyway. Now that before Lance um oh excuse me. <coughs> Yikes. I really should bring a cup of water with me when I do these sometimes. Okay, now, ultimately, I decide since Eric didn't get too much um, experience to level up to 52, I go ahead and do it artificially with the rare candy. And at 52, you just saw there, he learns Hydro Pump. Now, I really usually don't like... How you like that, really, usually? I typically do not like putting two same type uh, moves on a Pokemon, but since I can't unlearn or forget Surf, I just go ahead and go for the superior stab move and uh, Hydro Pump, just in case it seems opportune. And actually, once or twice, it does come in handy. So anyway, Lance here, I know for a fact, is going to lead with a Gyarados, and that's exactly why I put Gigaton up there. That Gigado that <laughs> Gigados, <laughs> that Gyarados. Game Freak, make it happen. Gigados. Can be a pain. So I go ahead and safety save here, just in case. I want to scrap the recording if it turns out really bad, but whatever. Anyway, this is Lance the Dragon Trainer. I'm kinda humble considering. <laughs> Usually other trainers will call themselves Dragon Masters before they even reach his level. So yeah, um, Lance. Can't really complain too much about his yellow team. They're actually at the adequate levels they need to be, unlike um, <coughs> Gold Silver Crystal and Heart Gold and Soul Silver. This is particularly Heart Gold Soul Silver. So anyway, yeah, Lance, he's actually a uh, challenge, even if you have trained up a bit. As we'll see here. This Gyarados, however, I do not want to be a part of the equation, which is exactly why I made sure to get a electric Pokemon with Stab Thunderbolt. This thing is flying water, or water flying to be more accurate, and it is quad weak. So yes, now he is going to have two Dragonairs along with a Gyarados, an Aerodactyl, and a Dragonite. This Dragonair, this first one, I know which his AI is programmed to put out first, has Thunder Wave, and it will love and it loves to use it. It also has Thunderbolt. It's effectively, he, each ha he has a Dragonair, sort of elemental Dragonairs, I guess you could say. This is the electric one. The other one is more ice-based. It actually has um, Bubble Beam and Ice Beam and whatnot. But since um, Dragonair is weak to, is a dragon, of course, hence the name, it is weak to Dragon, which there are no Dragon moves aside from Dragon Rage, which does set him out of damage. Way to go, Game Freak. And it is weak to Ice, so we have to rely on the Ice move from Blastoise. Now, I'm not too bad, since there's the Hyper Potion for once from a trainer. Now, since um, Dragonite is thankfully part flying, it gets an additional stack of weakness against Ice Beam. So going off of how much damage my Ice Beam is doing to the Dragonairs, I am very confident I can one-shot the Dragonite. So I'm very glad that worked out well. Aerodactyl. This thing could be annoying simply because it's very fast. It has Hyper Beam, matter of fact, um, all of uh, Lance's... Pokemon have Hyper Beam, they might as well be a Hyper Beam team rather than a Dream Team. Dream Team! Dragon Team! <laughs> Alright, it has Wing Attack, which is easily its weakest. Um, since it's part, since it's Rock Flying, actually have Brandon go out there and use Rock Slide on it. Using Hyper Beam is typically a trait that he'll do after he's done using maybe one move to try and get you within the realm, and this thing gets the critical on Hyper Beam. Which is so stupid. Not only does it knock out Brandon, but he doesn't have to recharge because this is Gen 1 rules. So yeah, I'm like, you know what? No. I'm not accepting that. <laughs> no. We're reviving Brandon, and he's going to beat you like he should. And as you saw right there, he has Fly. Fly's not too bad because he actually gave me another chance to go ahead and heal up Brandon completely, which is perfectly fine with me. Oh, Pidgeot, he's been very, very valuable to the team. I really wish I went back and um, trained into a Pidgeot, but training up to max level, to level 100, is not as fast as you think it would be, even with the Duduo or even the Dudrio that I could have gotten. Um, it flies up when I come out. Not nice, but it's not going to hurt. It's not going to one-shot me, even with a critical, I don't think, on the fly. No, it wouldn't have. So just go ahead and rock slide, and this will take it out. Watch me get a critical. No, <laughs> that's typically what happens. So I'm shocked. Alright, his Dragonite. Like I said before, all we gotta do is bring out Eric and... Like I said, all we gotta do is bring out Gigaton and use Thunder Wave on it because I'm not entirely certain whether or not... Um, you know what? Ice Beam for all I 
for all I know, could miss. <laughs> and this game can't troll you like that. Blazer's not too much of a problem. I just wish I was... There's times I wish Gigaton had his steel subtype, and sometimes he didn't. But it's not too bad. So I should go ahead and try to go for the Parafusion here. Unfortunately, the first time doesn't work. I go over the second time, it works, so... It was actually pretty cool because the paralysis actually worked when I intended it to. It actually works twice now. So now I'm confident enough to go ahead and put out Eric because I'm not entirely sure what this thing's move pool is. Of course it has Hyper Beam, I know that. Oh yes, it has Thunder! <laughs> Wonderful. Oh. Anyway, of all the times for it not to be paralyzed, so I'm like, you know what, fine, you want to use Thunder, or we'll put a ground type out there. Now, he does have the Blazer, which I'm predicting he'll use, so I actually go ahead and take the opportunity to use the Max Revive here, and just go ahead and bring Eric back. Because it finally dawned on me that, hey, maybe I should just go ahead and off keep offensive and <laughs> just one-shot him with the Ice Beam. Oh, Brian doesn't have good special, so yeah, that was going to happen. Pidgeotto was already gone, so that's why I had to put somebody out there. And this should one-shot. Better one-shot. Actually, no, no, it doesn't, so I think that's what I was worried about. He goes ahead. Now, this is actually an example of the a game's AI favoring itself. If you use a Hyper Potion, that means you have had to take it up your turn, and it goes ahead and it gives it to him, even though he couldn't have used it because he would have had full health before I attacked. You see what I'm saying? Well, whatever. It's gone now, so... <laughs> there. And with that, Lance is defeated. That was the Elite Four. Oh yes, the special, oh, you've beaten the Elite Four, but you're not the champion. There was another traitor who beat you before him. And it was Blue, our rival. Oh, none of us are surprised here. We all saw this coming. And with this, we are actually going to go ahead and move on and take on the champion. I believe, yes, okay. <laughs> and while we're here in the pre-recording, I'm not entirely certain 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 oh gosh it might be too early for me this time but no actually what we're gonna go ahead and do is of course if we were gonna take on the champion it would have finale in the title which of course it doesn't I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna max everybody out get everything ready for the champion fight I'm gonna make sure all PP is fully restored everybody including Pidgeotto has full health because all I need is for Pidgeotto to have, to have survived an attack somehow you know it might be possible. Very small chance, but possible that it survives with 1 or 2 HP and it could actually buy me another turn in case I need to revive and fully heal somebody. And with that, everybody is fully uh, restored. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a couple of things. First is I'm going to rearrange everybody uh, who I want to open with. And of course that's going to be Eric because we know that Blue is going to open with Sand Slash. And afterwards I'm just going to rearrange everybody here. Just um, for simplicity's sake, easier for me to access because I have a good idea of what Blue's uh, lineup is going to be. So we have Eric, the Blastoise, with a very good um, mix stats, a good mix attacker, very good defense, very good attack. His speed is alright with the moves Submission, Ice Beam, Hydro Pump, and Surf. Very good layout. Now that Ice Beam is going to need some Pokemon power, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. This is why I carried the Aether. So let's go ahead and max it out. It's gonna either gives 10 Pokemon power to a move, so that's fully restored, I know that. Okay, really quick, we have Brandon, the Nido King, a very strong attack at 126. His speed is decent, which is just fine. His defense is okay. His special, it could be better, but that's not what we use him. He has Earthquake, Rock Slide, Strength, and Double Kick. Kate, the Nine Tails, with an attack of 101, which is pretty decent for that dig. Defense is 100, speed is 127, which is very good, and special 120. Fire Blast, Hyper Beam, Quick Attack, and Dig. For that fire coverage and that fire blast is really good. Kita, the Haunter, very high speed, very high special attack. It pretty much describes her. And of course, she's our Psychic user. Psychic, Hypnosis, Dream Eater, and Mega Drain are her move pool. And then finally, we have Gigaton. The attack, not too high, which is fine. Um, but he has Takedown, Thunder Wave, Thunderbolt, and Supersonic. Actually, what I did really quickly is that I was actually trying to compare whether or not 
Kita's Psychic or Gigaton's Thunderbolt needed the Pokemon power most, and it's going to be Kita's Psychic being less. I know I don't need 9 Thunderbolts for uh, blue, but that's just fine. So with that being done, everything being restored to its max, I will see you guys next time for the finale of Pokemon Yellow. Hope to see you then.